we see now is that the government of Malaysia, uh, acting through Dana Harta, for example, Dana Harta has won uh, 589 million judgment against the Jinnah Okay, uh, his 13 billion dollar counterclaim is dismissed. So the government of Malaysia is in a strong position and including several other GLCs uh, who have litigation with uh, Tajin Ramli. Now, that is one part. In terms of his conduct when he was running mass, uh, besides the 2002 and 2005 police reports, what you have now is the 2009 report to the NECC. This report is very serious because if you go through this report carefully, you will find what this report is basically saying is that Tajuddin Ramli had bribed He's making the allegation that Tajuddin Ramli had bribed the police and the AG's chambers to close and, well, we don't know what the MECC, but the allegation is, bribed the police and the AG's chambers to close this investigation. That is the allegation made in May 2009. So, not only the two police reports, now you are accusing him of bribery, of, of, of corrupting these two agencies to not take action. So, at one hand, you have a judgment against him to collect back your money. You have serious criminal offences alleged to be done by him. The big question now is, why is the government allowing Tajidun Ramli to go off scot-free in a negotiated settlement which is completely secret? Nobody knows the details. Nobody knows why we are not collecting the 599 million. Nobody knows whether we are paying public money to him. It's all completely secret. This suggests, as what Y.P. William has said, that Tajuddin Ramli is able to pressure someone in the Malaysian government high up enough, sufficiently high up, to do all this for his benefit. So who is that person? What has this person done that Tajuddin Ramli has got such a grip on him that he can organize this to happen? Dato Idris Jala knows exactly what took place. His name is also mentioned in this MECC report. He knows full well what has happened. We are sure he has advised the Prime Minister what has happened. So Idris Jala has to explain what is happening. Uh, as far as we are concerned in Pati Karilan, there is sufficient evidence here to say on a prima facie basis, whoever is negotiating this settlement, and we have uh, Minister Nazri's name involved, and whoever else's name is involved, is committing the serious offence of criminal conspiracy right now by doing this agreement with the Jinnah Ramli. There is sufficient evidence for us to say that, and we want the government to reply on this. i just highlight one part about the report to show you how, uh, at that point, this uh, the allegation of corruption has some basis, because the former director of CCD, uh, CCD at that time is Commercial Crime Division, Dato Ramli Yusuf, gave a briefing to the former Prime Minister Tun Abdullah Badawi on 26th of March 2007, paragraph 10.2 of this report, where Dato Ramli, after having studied the investigation paper, briefed the Prime Minister and he said that various offences, I quote, the Director of CCD disclosed that various offences have been identified that are prosecutable. This is the head of CCD <coughs> informing the Prime Minister after his Check everything. Which is why, when after that nothing happened, which is why the management of Mars launched this report to allege an even more serious allegation to say that Tajidin Ramli had bribed the police, had bribed the AG's chambers to make sure that the file is closed. Unfortunately, we have heard nothing from the MACC since then about that allegation. We ask the question again who is this person who is so powerful in the Malaysian government, in the cabinet probably, that Tajuddin Ramli is able to squeeze so hard that he can do all this. That's the question we want answered. And we think uh, two people who can start helping us to answer this question will be Dr. Idris Jala and uh, of course Minister Nazri himself. <coughs> so Minister Nazri was the one who was in the news uh, talking about this settlement between Tajuddin Ramli. Uh, the facts show, like what William like said, he took over mass in '94. He had $600 million cash reserve. When he left in 2001, it was accumulated $8 billion losses. That is not just financial incompetence. What this report says is he committed criminal offences. He milked the money out of mass 
mass into his personal companies. That's what this report says. And it also goes further to say that he bribed the police and the English neighbors to close the investigation. We asked the question to the Prime Minister, why are you covering up all this instead of exposing <coughs> this other amazing problem?